Hello and welcome back to the Dango's Outdoors YouTube channel. If you're new around here, think about subscribing. So we're over a week now into the UK coronavirus lockdown and I'm going a little bit stir crazy stuck in the house. I really want to get out fishing. So I'm doing the next best thing, which is tying up a few rigs at home. And I have been asked a couple of times in the comments to show how I tie this rig in particular. This is my take on the hinge stiff rig. It's the multi hinge as some people call it and it requires some different kind of knots tied a little bit differently as well so i'll take you through that and just to make it a little bit more interesting i've set up almost like a little rig tying studio here for you i'm using two cameras i've got one facing my hands i've got you facing me so they might look a little bit different because they are different cameras but yeah we'll, we'll struggle through it and do our best so let's get started on the rig now oh just move these out of the way god they get everywhere at the moment and that so to tie the rig, got all the components and things here, rather than go through them now, which I don't know, that might be a little bit boring, I thought I'd just link, uh, list them in the description below. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the hook section first. To tie that, you need some chod rig material. And I use a ruler, not because I'm particularly fussy about the length of my rig, but because I'm fussy about how much material I use, I don't like to waste any of it. Uh, you know, when you when you cut your tag ends off and I see like inches of it lying there, I just see other rigs that I could have made. Ah, maybe that's just me being a tight Yorkshireman, <laughs> but there you go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out four inches of material, fold that over, form a point. So there we have a four inch loop and we'll just cut that off. There we are. Now in some situations, I actually quite like a high pop-up. So I'm gonna tie this one quite high and it also helps to demonstrate a rig a bit more. So I'm gonna do about an inch and three quarters of material there. And if you take the ends of your chod rig material, fold it over your ruler or whatever you're using, or if you just wanna use your hands and estimate it, that's fine. So now we've got a little bite in the material. Take a size 11 ring swivel, push your loop through the small end so the ring swivel sits in that little bite you created in a loop. Now what you've got to do is tie a two turn blood knot but using both tag ends. So this is a little bit fiddly, what you want to do is rather than try and turn the line around the hook section, what I'll do is pinch it like this and turn the swivel instead. Now if we put both tag ends back through the loop created, that'll be our two turn blood knot. There we go, pull it down and that's it. That is effectively the knot tied. We've just got to bed it down now, which is a little bit tricky with this rig. So I'll show you a little trick to do that. So what I'm gonna do is take my forceps, pinch for two tag ends and wrap them around the forceps. So that gives me something to pull with now. Put a baiting needle in the loop, moisten it a lot, and pull with both, gently bedding the knot down. Cut the tag ends off, leaving a few millimeters. Because it is quite stiff material that can get caught in a mesh of your landing net, things like that, I just blob it with a lighter. So that is effectively the little chod rig, the hook section tied. I'll put the hook on later because we're gonna do the boom section next. So for the boom section, I use a semi-stiff coated braid. And I like to attach the ring swivel with a loop knot. Problem is I've already tied that big loop there. So it'd be really hard to pass all of this back through a loop knot. I'll show you a little way to get around it. We're going to be using an anti-tangle sleeve later, so I thread that on first. What I'm gonna do is without tying the loop, just tie the figure of eight. Put the hook link through the ivory ring swivel. There we go. So we have figure of eight knot and the little hook section hanging off there. Now what we do is we form our loop and pass the tag end back through the figure of eight following the path that it took. Now this 
may seem a little bit complicated and you can try and tie a loop knot normally if you want to, but this just creates a much neater little knot at the end because I only want a small loop. And uh, it's a bit of an old climbing trick, this, to get ropes around obstacles that you can't pass the rope over the top of. And it works just as well in fishing. There we go. So I followed the path of the figure of eight back through the knot. Now I'm gonna moisten it and tighten it down. Trim the tag end. See, I'm a little bit annoyed that, that I've wasted like two inches of material there. You know, that could have been just one inch. <laughs> there we have our very neat little connection to our loop, our swivel, and our hook section. Really nice there. Now the length of the boom section kind of depends on what I'm fishing over. As a general rule, the firmer it is, the shorter it will be, the choddier or weedier it is, the longer it will be. But I find somewhere around about seven or eight inches to be a decent length for all round fishing. And so what I'm gonna do is again using the ruler, I'm gonna put the ruler at the end of the anti-tangle sleeve there. So where it ends, that's gonna be where my boom section ends. So this is a six inch ruler plus the loop and the anti-tangle sleeve. So we're looking at about an eight inch hook link. If I just snip that off, but leaving myself a couple of inches of line to work with. Now at this point, it's up to you what you attach your hook link to. You can tie it directly to a swivel. You can tie a loop in it and attach it to like a quick change type system. But I'm not gonna change this hook link once I've got it on. I changed the hook if I'm gonna change anything. So that's the whole point of having a multi-rig which we'll get onto later. So what I do is I just attach it straight to the lead clip itself. When it comes to attaching the boom section to my lead clip, I prefer a palomar knot. So you form a loop in the end of a line there, push it through the eye of your lead clip, just tie a single overhand knot. You might want to use a bait needle to help yourself out here. There we go. Now normally what you do with a palomar knot is now pass that lead clip back through that little loop. But I can't do that, I can't reach it. So an alternative is to instead pass the whole hook link through that little loop. Which might seem a bit silly, but the hook link at its most widest is that little ring there on the size 11 ring swivel. So it doesn't particularly matter, I can pull that through really easily. A slightly different way of doing the knot, but still very effective. Now we just pass the loop over the knot, down onto the swivel section of the clip, moisten it and pull it tight. Off comes the tag end, and the anti-tangle sleeve gets pushed over it. There we go, so that is effectively the hook link tied. All we have to do now is add a hook, a hook bait, and some putty to balance it. So now we're gonna put our hook and hook bait on the hook section there. And to make this easier, you want to really form a point with the end of it. And again, get your forceps or your pliers or whatever back in, and squeeze that down into a point. Take your hook. Now I'm very fussy about how sharp my hooks are. So I keep them in a little hook box here so they can't blunt in your tackle box. And what you want is about a size six, stiff rig, chod type hook. There are loads on the market. Just use whatever you're confident in. And push your hook section through the front of the eye of the hook. There we go. Through the rig ring. And then put the loop back over the point of the hook. There we are. Pull it down. Now that forms your little D-rig effect. And just to exaggerate that, what I do Put a baiting needle in the loop there. And if you pull on the hook section, pushing the baiting needle up to the top of the hook, it will form a little D for you that your hook bait can slide up and down nice and freely, just like on a chod rig or anything like that. If anything, more so than on a normal chod rig. So there we have it. That's our little hook section sorted out. And that will sit up off the lake bed, just like that. But we need something to counterbalance it. We need a little bit of putty. Here we go. Take our tungsten rig putty. That seems to divide the angling world and where to put the putty. Some put it 
up on the top I have a swivel here. Some will put it around the bottom of the ring. I like to mold it around the knot of the loop section there, the little figure of eight loop knot. It's a nice convenient spot to do it anyway because you've got that knot that the putty can sit around. So here's my thinking. I want this hook section here to have the most amount of movement possible. So I want the loop, the ring and the swivel all up off the lake bed. So I put the putty below it. So now this hook section can have 360 degrees of movement. Doesn't matter if a fish comes at this rig from behind, from the front, it can spin around, go in a fish's mouth with the hook point facing downwards. There we go. That's my first rig tying video done. And no doubt I'll look back at this video and think of ways to improve it. But yeah, I love this multi-hinge rig. It's so effective. You always see anglers saying on videos and reading about it, they say, oh, you know, that rig's just like a hinge stiff rig. It hooks fish so well. Or just use a hinge stiff rig then. It is really good. And the thing about the multi-hinge is that it's so adaptable. Now I can take the hooks on and off without having to retie a whole new hook link. So if I think the hook's a little bit blunt, I can change it. If I think I need a new hook bait, I can change it. Yeah, great rig, rarely tangles, and well, once they're on, they're on for good. They so rarely come off this rig. Brilliant, well thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll do a few more little rig videos and things in the meantime to keep us all entertained, including myself. This keeps me out of trouble greatly. <laughs> but yeah, drop a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.